Welcome back to another Super Magnet Man video. One of our customer questions that we get very often is about projecting the magnetic field over a distance. Everybody would like to take a magnet this size and have something over here and all of a sudden the magnet act like a laser beam and shoot over and pick it up and lift it. Well, the physics just doesn't work that way. We want to take a little bit of a look at how the magnetic field actually works over distance and how we might be able to achieve that strength of field that we want at some distance in the, away from the surface of the magnet. So we're going to start by looking at this magnet. This is our CYL, our cylinder magnet, and it's 3 quarters of an inch in diameter, or 19.04 millimeters, and it is 1 inch long, or 25.4 millimeters. And it's an N40, so it's just one of our basic magnets that a lot of people use for different things. And what we're going to do is look at this. The surface reading on this is 5,420 gal. If I move away from the surface and I use a spacer that's going to be about 23.7 millimeters thick, and I get away from the surface, it's reading 320 gauss. It's pretty much where it peaks out at. And then if I add another spacer to it, the same thing, and I get 47 0.4 millimeters away from the surface of the magnet, we're down to 71 gauss. When it comes to moving metal particles made out of iron, one of the general rules of thumb that we have is it's got to have about 50 gauss to pick it up. We're at 70, so from this distance, about 47 millimeters away, we would expect this magnet to pick up a nail or a very small paper clip. Now let's take a look at what happens when we add the, another magnet to it. One of the things that helps us extend or project a magnetic field is making the magnet longer. So instead of having one magnet that's two inches long and three quarters of an inch in diameter, I'm going to have two of them that I have stuck together. Our surface gauss now is 5780, and if we measure at 23.7 millimeters away, we're getting 378, 378, 79. And if I put two of these, let's see where it maxes out. When we put two of them, we're getting 86 gauss with this spacer at 47.4 millimeters. As you can see, our original number on the surface was 5420 and we see that it did increase to 5790. So we get a little bit of an increase, but we doubled the magnet length. Now we look at the next one at 23.7 millimeters away. We notice that it did go up from 323 to 378. But you would think if I'm doubling the magnet, I would double the field, but you don't. It doesn't work that way. At 47 millimeters away, we go from 71 to 86. So you can see we're not getting that much of a change. We're going to go a couple of more steps. We're going to put four of them together, then we're going to put seven together and see what happens as we continue to increase this magnet length. To summarize our data at this point, what we see is as we doubled it from one inch to two inches long, it went up 370 on the surface, 55 uh, the point, the 23.7 millimeters away and only 15 when we're at 47 millimeters away. You've doubled it again. You now have four times the magnet that you had originally, but we only added 160 when we look at it on the surface. You look at it, it actually only added 51. It added less to go to that four inch length, yeah, the 23.7 millimeter distance, and then it only added 27 with the next step. Even if we extended it all the way to seven of these magnets, you actually see, and that's what I wanted you to see is, on the surface it actually starts to drop. Now I could put 20 of these in a row and it would still be roughly 5,900, but you're getting nothing to go beyond this four magnet range right here. You didn't get much to go to four, but you get nothing going beyond that four inch length here because the diameter is three quarters of an inch. However, we did see that we kept bumping it up a little bit when we went to seven at a distance, but it's not very much of a difference. You only went up five from 113 to 118. So this lets you see one of the parameters we want to look at. The other thing that we have to look at is diameter. 
The way that we increase the magnetic flux at a distance is by increasing the diameter and the thickness. So we're going to take a look at our second magnet now. With this magnet, we're increasing the diameter to 2 inches or 50 millimeters, and the thickness is 25 millimeters. It's the same thickness, but it is larger in diameter. So let's notice what happens when we get the Gauss reading in the center here. We see that it's only 4570, which you know is a little bit less than what we were getting with the other one. But when we start looking at it over distance, and we add that 23.7 millimeter spacer, we're now getting a 13, 12, 13, 15, 13, 16, it sort of moves around, there it is, 13, 20, 13, 25 when I get it into center. When I put two of these for 47 millimeter thickness, notice that it goes to 410, 408, 409, 410, with that spacer in between it. Now we're going to put two of these together and come back and see what it does with two. It... While we don't have two of them, I still want to take this up to the biggest magnet that we have that we can look at, and it's a cylinder as well. It is three inches in diameter, three inches thick, in 50. And what we're going to do is take the readings on it. I won't be able to stack a second one on it, but this will give you an idea of how the field changes based on size. So as we go even larger, we get a center magnet reading of 5510 for this magnet. When I add the spacer to it and get it 23 millimeters away, it is 2670 gauss. When I add two of them, and make it 47.4 millimeters away, it is 1158, 1159, 1160, so it's about 1160 gauss at uh, 47.4 millimeters away from the surface. So, so when we look at the two inch by one inch by itself, you see that the Gauss reading is smaller than it is on the other magnet, even though this is a higher strength magnet. And that's because the surface area is wider. And if you look at it, its diameter is two inches, but its thickness is only one. So it spreads the magnetic field out some, and that's why this is actually reading lower. However, when we go over a certain distance, you notice at 23 millimeters, this is 1325, whereas this dropped all the way to 323, which lets us see that if the magnet is larger in diameter and we start to make it a little bit farther away, it maintains the field better. It doesn't drop as much. When we go to the next one at 47, it's 410. 410 is higher than this one was at 323, at one inch thick and three quarters of an inch in diameter. When we doubled it, notice what happens. I doubled this one, I pick up 1200 gauss. When I doubled this one, I only picked up 370. So you can see that if you're going to really increase the flux over distance, you have to not only get longer, but you have to get bigger in diameter. And so we go from up to a, five, a 5770, 1740, up from 1325 is nearly 400. 410 to 580 is up from about 170 at nearly two inches away. We're nearly two inches away from the surface and we're still reading 580 gauss. And you can see we didn't get anywhere near those gains in this one. So then as usual, we like to see what the big magnet does. This is three inches in diameter and three inches thick. And you see that our surface gauge starts out at 5510. If you notice this one, two inches by two inches is 5770. It is a little bit higher than we're getting over here. But when we get to that 23 millimeter distance, this one is 1740. This one has dropped to 50, 2670. So this one did not drop anywhere near as much. The magnetic mass is so much more that it is able to maintain that field over a greater distance. You go to the 47.4 distance and we're at 1160. 1160 is, is double what we were getting uh, with the two by two. So the biggest thing to keep in mind when you're looking at projecting a magnetic field over distance is that you can go thick until you get about twice the thickness the thickness is twice as much as the diameter. Then, when you go to the next step, if you want to increase it more, your best bang is to start getting larger in diameter. 
And we've had a lot of applications that customers have come up with that have been asking us, okay, over a distance, like, you know, something like 10 or 12 inches, how can I get the highest field strength over that distance? And that's what we're going to take a look at next. Our customers are wanting to get a strong magnetic field a great distance away from the magnet. And when you look at the surface Gauss readings on the magnet, it's either going to take a gigantic magnet or it takes two magnets. This technique seems to help us a lot because what it really does is it adds the field together as we'll see in a demonstration in just a minute. But if you come across this distance and you have these magnets that are attracted to each other, they're going to pull the flux in and we get a reading in the center that's going to be about twice of what we would get if we were reading any one of these magnets individually. So if you've got to put a, a magnetic field in something and you, want, you have this large distance you need to go over, your size of your magnet has to go up, but you really want to put two of them there. To get started, let's take a look at this setup. All right. In this setup, I took those two inch diameter, one inch thick magnets apart that we looked at earlier. So we have the Gauss data on that, but we're gonna also look at this. I've got a form made to hold them about six inches apart, and we're gonna take some readings and see what we get. To give us an idea, we look and from the surface of the inside board to the other one, it's five inches. So two and a half inches is dead center. So if I go to two and a half inches here, I'm at about three and three eighths inches to the surface of the magnet. So what I'm going to do is go on this side and measure the surface Gauss reading three and three eighths inches away. And so when you measure this, we're getting about 112, 113 Gauss. If I go to the middle, about two and a half inches in to the center, I'm getting a reading of 232, which is almost the same as if we added 114 and 114 together. So we're getting about 230. That increased our flux in the center of where we wanted it. We wanted the flux in the middle, and the way to do it is to put a magnet on both sides. So the key things to keep in mind is if you want to work with a magnet over distance, let's say three, four, five inches away, think larger in diameter, probably five inches in diameter, six inches in diameter, and go to one inch or two inches thick. As you go up in thickness, you're gonna project the field farther. As you go out in diameter, you're going to project the field farther. When you wanna work with a field in a closed area, let's just say some of the ones we're looking at are wanting to go through an object. And if you wanna go through an object that's 10 or 12 inches in diameter, you need a magnet on both ends to get the flux that you need in the center. So I hope this helps you understand a little bit about how to get the best magnetic reach out of two magnets working together.